Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to kind of revisit the reading goal that I shared with you guys at the beginning of the year. So I love to read, you guys know that about me, and I like to make a reading goal and I use the app Goodreads on there where you can set an annual goal, you can track the books that you read. And so at the beginning of the year I made a goal to read 40 books throughout the, the entire year. And um, when I just checked before taping this video, which we're about halfway through the year, I am actually at 47 books for the year. So I've already beat my written goal. So here's a little secret. I actually have an informal goal of reading 100 books this year. It's a really lofty goal to push myself and I'm not entirely sure that I'll make it to 100, but I wanted to have kind of like a goal that really stretched me. So now that I've made my, you know, formal goal, I'm really reaching for this goal of 100 books. So what I wanted to do is now that I've I've actually met it halfway through the year, I wanted to share some of the top books that I had um, on my list and that I've read up to this point. So um, one thing to note is that a lot of them are actually like clean like rom-coms. So there's um, they're just romantic comedies and they I have found that um, the older that I get that I needed a more light-hearted book before I fell asleep. So before I was reading very suspenseful books as I was about to fall asleep and I was finding that I would try to fall asleep after reading for a period and my heart would be racing and it just wasn't cutting it anymore. And so I had to have something that I knew was going to have a happy ending. It was light and funny and the banter between the characters was just like like right on. And so I needed those to be the books that I was reading before I went to bed so that I was kind of falling asleep with a smile on my face, not feeling like someone was chasing me. So a lot of the books are romantic comedies. And um, so I don't, I don't apologize for that. They're fun and I enjoy reading them, but I do have um, other things in there. I am including audiobooks. I do count audiobooks as books that I've read. So some of the top ones that I'm including are actually audiobooks that I've listened to. I just find that along with, um, you know, podcasts, when I'm doing things, it's nice to be able to listen to something. So if I'm folding laundry or washing dishes or doing things that are very mundane tasks, it's nice to be able to listen to something at the same time. So some of them are um, audiobooks, but I also have included the read alouds that I'm reading to my kids throughout the year. So sometimes those are pertaining to what we're learning in school and sometimes they're just some fun reads or just some things that I think might have some really great valuable lessons that they need to be listening. So I'm just going to kind of highlight a few that really stood out to me that I wanted to share with you guys in all the different categories so that maybe if you're interested, if you're looking for a book, maybe you guys can pick one of these up, whether it's for your own personal reading goal and read reading time or if it's something to read aloud with your kids. So some of the books I have here to show you, they're either my personal copies or some things that I have from the library. Other things that we read early in the year that I did get from the library, I don't have a physical copy to show you, but I will highlight them and I'll put them in the notes below. So if you're interested, you would be able to find them. But the first one that I want to highlight was Turn Homeward, Hannah Lee. And this one was just an interesting read because we were studying the Civil War. And I wouldn't say that this is like one of the books where I was like, I loved this book. I love this book. I want to read it again and again. It wasn't necessarily why I included this one in my list. It was written from a, a little girl named Hannah Lee, and she was in the Confederate side of the Civil War. That was where she was from. She was from the South. And so I thought it brought a lot of interesting discussion because I felt like from us living in the North and from in where, you know, in the Union, a lot of books are written from that perspective. And I thought this one was interesting to read from a little girl's perspective of being on the Confederacy and just some of the things that they went through that I don't think that I had really recognized. And so we, it, we just, it lended itself to a lot of great conversation between me and the kids of the different things that were going on in that time. And so it's more of like a historical fiction. It, it kind of blends a little bit of historical fact with some fun storytelling. So that was why I included in this one. It was just from a different perspective and we found it to be interesting. 
One that I don't have with me is Pippi Longstocking, and I just included this one because it was one of those classic reads, but the kids would cackle when I would, leave, when I would read it. So it was the very first one, and the kids just, Pippi Longstocking just gets into all of these crazy things. Her sidekick is a monkey, and she has a horse that she does stuff with, and just some of the antics and the things that she would do, the kids would be like rolling on the floor laughing because they thought it was just a very funny book. So I always... Um, or I wanted to share that one because the kids just liked it. They genu they've they asked me to get the second book to read it because they enjoyed the first one so much. Okay, another one that I have that we read was Journey to Topaz. So when we were studying about um, the uh, World War II and about the bombing of Pearl Harbor, this kind of came into it because, again, we enjoyed this one because it also lended itself to great discussion, and it was coming from a, a standpoint that we're, we weren't terribly familiar with. So it follows a little girl named Yuki, and she is Japanese-American, and so everything that happened, she lived in California, and after everything that happened with Pearl Harbor, her family was detained in an internment camp. And so it's from her perspective and her family's perspective perspective of being detained um, even though they were innocent and they considered themselves to be Americans what it was like and how they were treated during the time of Pearl Harbor and so again just another interesting viewpoint when we're used to seeing it from the other side and I think a lot of times we forget um, how the Japanese were treated during World War II um, but it was just a very a very interesting read as well good discussion um, for when you're studying you know World War II and Pearl Harbor. Now here we have, this one is a library book that we've just finished and I highly recommended this one. Um, it was recommended to me by a friend, but it's called Fish in a Tree. Sorry, there's a really, it's got the, the backing on it from a library book, but um, it's got a horrible glare in it, but it's Fish in a Tree. And we are just reading this one or just read this one because of the topic. So it's about a girl named Allie Nickerson and she struggles with reading and dyslexia and has a really hard time um, expressing that, you know, she's struggling with this and she doesn't want to be called dumb or stupid by her peers in her class but is really struggling with reading and she finally has a teacher who recognizes this in her and gets her the help that she needs and recognizes too that people learn differently and it's got some really great lessons I have a struggling reader and so I'm reading this aloud really hoping that he's getting it. I wanted to share it's one of my favorite quotes you know, when you're talking about people learning differently. So this is the teacher that's talking to Ali said, now don't be so hard on yourself, okay? You know, a wise person once said, everyone is smart in different ways, but if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life thinking that it's stupid. And I love that quote because we all learn differently and God gave us all different gifts and different abilities and we use them differently. And I'm trying to teach that to my kids that we all, we all have different strengths and different weaknesses and that doesn't make one of us better than the other. So great life lessons in this one. Really, really enjoyed it. I will say I'm reading it aloud. It does have some bully scenes in it. So there's a character, um, two character girls in the class that are Allie's peers, Shay and Jessica, who are just not very friendly to all the kids. They they bully them, they make fun of them. I will say I, I try to read ahead and maybe make things a little softer, you know, just trying not, my kids, as being homeschooled aren't really exposed to being bullied. So it's caused a lot of discussion about bullying, but I try to um, soften some of the language that she uses when she's making fun of other kids because I just don't want to put words into my kids' mouths that they're not accustomed to hearing, um, like calling people stupid or, you know, things like that. So that's totally everyone's prerogative as they're reading, but that's just something that we're doing and with our family. So those were ones that really stuck out to me that I had read. We've obviously read several others, but those are ones that I just wanted to highlight. Not necessarily like there are these, you know, books, these amazing books, but they provided a lot of discussion, a lot of fun, and um, just my kids either enjoyed them too. So, all right, now I'll move on to some nonfiction books that I read. And so um, 
one that I have here, this is my copy. I um, really do like John Taylor Gatto. Um, he wrote Dumbing Us Down. And so it's the hidden curriculum of compulsory schooling. And one of the other ones that I read from him, I gotta look at Weapons of Mass Instruction. And so I actually listened to that one as an audiobook. And so those were two that I have either read or listened to um, this year. And I just highly recommend them. He was a public school teacher in New York and actually won like New York State of the Teacher year award and as his he's accepting this award he's basically giving them his resignation speech because of all the flaws and all the things that he has found in public school and so um and he just highlights them a lot of what's in here are just excerpts of different papers he's written or speeches he's made as to what's wrong with the the public school system so um these are just i really enjoyed them i i if you search in here i've like got whole sections like outlined and underlined because I just thought there were so many good nuggets. I did that in the audiobook as well where you can kind of like set little places to like hold where if you want to go back and listen to it and I found that I did that with that book as well. They're just really great books. Another book that I don't have a copy of because I got it from the library was Adventuring Together by Greta Eskridge. And that was just one that I thought was a great reminder of getting out and adventuring together, right? It was kind of one of the precursors to what we're doing, living in this RV. She was just talking about getting out to and, and um, enjoying uh, the outside and the outdoors. And they don't have to be these grand adventures like living in a camper, but you know, go to a local park, get outside, go make memories with your family and it really her book just really spoke to me um, as far as this adventure we were getting ready to go on but she even explains like it doesn't your adventure doesn't have to look like everyone else's adventure which I appreciate it because people live in different areas we have different opportunities around us you can still find adventures and do things with your family without it looking cookie cutter and like everybody else now I just want to mention some of the fiction books that I have read. So one of them was 1984 by George Orwell and I read this aloud with my husband and I. We just kind of would use it as a way to kind of read at the end of the day and just kind of have something to discuss. But um, just like dumbing us down, I was underlining so many things. I found it so pertinent to what was going on in today's society. Um, I did not care. Um, actually, both my husband and I, we were not a huge fan of the ending of the book. So I won't give you any spoilers, but just wasn't um, our favorite. But I will say there were so many good nuggets throughout as far as just it. I felt like he wrote it in the 40s or 50s um let's see 1949 and I just thought holy moly like how is he it seems so pertinent for today and it was just really interesting how he could have written this a year ago um so I highly recommend this one just very thought-provoking and an interesting read um, the other, the other ones I don't have as well. So several of them I read on my Kindle. So I know I shared that I like a lot of the romantic, clean romantic, um, rom-coms or just fun stories like that. And so I wanted to give you a couple of authors because I've read a lot of their books over the course of the year. And one is Sherry Tapscott. She wrote, she has written a lot that I really, really enjoyed. If you want particulars of which ones I would recommend, um, that I found to be really, really good, um, send me a message or or, you know drop a question below and I can share the exact ones that I really enjoyed another author that I have really enjoyed um, she just has a really great way of writing clean romances as far as just the banter back and forth a lot of them are like enemies to uh, lovers kind of thing um, but Sarah Adams and so both of those uh, ladies write really good clean romances and they're just fun reads so again if you want particulars just go ahead and ask and I can send them your way but another book that I wanted to highlight and I know I've shared this before is Codename Helene and so this one was just phenomenal I could not put this one down it's really long but it's set during World War II about uh, a um, English spy. She's a woman and she uh, turns into this um, English 
spy who is working for uh, uh, the resistance against Hitler and the Gestapo. And so it, again, historical fiction, bleeding and true events. She was, it, she was a real person and she really did that again, but filling in with some things to make the story flow a little bit better, but it is a fantastic book. I won't say it is perfectly clean as far as there is some language. It was in a wartime and it, it kind of goes through, you know, some of the more horrific things. So, um, but with that said, still very good book. So, um, yeah, those are the books that I wanted to highlight for you guys. If you have any questions as to any of the books that I've read, go ahead and drop them below. You guys know I'm happy to answer any questions about that. And um, until next time, have a blessed day.